All right, guys, listen to me. This is what happened, okay? I plead the fifth. No, no. Welcome to DG360. <laughs> Star Atlas, okay? We had, <laughs> we did a little video because they came out with new content. Now, here's a little clip from the stream. I got contacted by both the community manager from Star Atlas and uh, the content creator who brought out three pieces of, of new content on the official Star Atlas channel. They are now in our Discord. Be nice to them. Be nice to them. Be civil. Be polite. Uh, it's a project that I actually, you know, before everybody starts jumping on my on the hate train and all the white knights and fanboys from Star Atlas come over and try to persecute me because they think I'm, you know, biased against this. Let me just tell you, I'm a big proponent of decentralized gaming. I'm a big proponent of of crypto. I'm a big proponent of NFTs. You know, that's that's contradictory to what a lot of things are being fed through the internet. Like, there's a lot of hate. There's a lot of people that necessarily don't understand it. Uh, but you know. Here's the thing. NFTs will become mainstream whether you like it or not because 5 to 15-year-olds are being trained every single day to use NFTs. NFTs are going to hit real big because it's going to bring reoccurring sales with large corporations like Pepsi and Coca-Cola that, that hire fucking artists and put, put NFT stamps on – tickets right so that you know down the road they're collecting 10 percent from artists every time somebody sells or purchases through a smart contract the nft so they only have upside with this corporations only have upside with this and they understand that maybe our generation isn't isn't like down with it because we sound like our fucking parents and we don't we don't know what they are but trust me nfts are being used every fucking day in video games and and it's being pushed out there to the masses and and the younger kids they're already using them they know what it's about and and the adults well we're just like huh some of us know some of us know what's good versus bad some of us have taken the hours to research the differences uh you know i'm not going to get into that conversation okay I see the utility of blockchain gaming. I see the utility of decentralized gaming. I see the utility of crypto and gaming. I want to pay to earn. I, I want to play and earn experience, not a play to earn experience, okay? And I talk about that a lot on the channel. If you're wondering what the differences are, play and earn is when the game developers actually put the gamers first. It's developers that focus on the game and the fun first and the money aspects later, like an like a complimentary cherry on top of a fucking Sunday. If they do it right, that's how they can do it. That's the recipe to success. I said a lot of the same stuff I'm saying right now in this particular video. But in this video, I did happen to play this sound a lot because I was so disheartened by what I saw from Star Atlas. It really made me upset. Erad said, dude, wait till you watch this. My friend Erad, who's a content creator as well, he said, because he knows I've been watching this. He knows I know about the space. He knows I actually am excited about it. And he was just waiting me, waiting for me to rip into this. He makes a he 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 was waiting for my disappointment and he relished it he knew it when he watched it he was like eradicated i eradicated his feelings i eradicated his heart everything is destroyed with dg he's right everything was destroyed for me this day and it was such a sad day for me it's still a sad day for me he's laughing about it now he is laughing at me <laughs> That's how I felt. I was a deer in headlights. It's literally how I felt when I watched this. Look at what happened here. Look at this. Look at this. So if it looks like it handles like a pregnant whale, that is by design. But as you can see, I have my HS <laughs> set up. Uh, the whole goddamn thing looks like a pregnant whale. The whole goddamn presentation looks like a pregnant whale. Not just the ship and its movements, but the whole goddamn ball of wax looks like a goddamn orca. Was, uh, that washed up on the shore and seagulls are picking at it right now. For God's sake, what is it that I am watching? <laughs> that was something that was very important to me to get joystick support. I feel like I'm no back in 1999. Flies with the mouse and keyboard. <laughs> Despite this ship not yet having an interior because it's still a work in progress, I still prefer this first person view. I've always flown that way. I'm just a huge Space Sim fan. I love all of them. I've got literally thousands of hours on the stick. So for me to be able to work on this game is really 
just it's, is there really a stick needed for this? <laughs> like, do you really need it? And, and during this stream, I did. A, I, <laughs> during this stream, I played a lot of this sound effect. I was so disappointed at the presentation and the content that was put on the channel. I was just really just, you know, it again, White Knights of Star Atlas are very upset with me now. I can see that they're screaming with it. Let me repeat that I was very much looking forward to this. Still am. I still think, I, I still want them to lift themselves out of this hole I feel they've created for themselves. Because this is a black eye in terms of presentation. It's horrible. And the presentation lends itself to thinking that perhaps the product is not good. Like, really not good. And then, also on the game development side of the things, I have to be rational and I have to say, listen, they're just starting out. I remember a point at which Star Citizen was at the same people did this, you know, like the, the, the same thing happened. People would come in and said, really, are you fucking serious? We just have a hangar module and a, an arena commander and that's it. So there, there was points in Star Citizen's history that, that I can see similarities on. But this, what I saw was just horrible, like literally blew my mind. So it was so bad. And so here's what I got from the community manager which is great because they're on it. So it makes me think that they're worried about, you know, the perception of it as this video really only has 4,000 views, you know, like it's not a lot of views. It's a, it's a, it's a little blip on the radar screen. Uh, but like, you know, right now the industry's hurting so bad with all cryptos being down and everybody thinking that everything's fake and, you know, there's no utility, which is, you know, there, there are some, but it's a small percentage of the utility and it's, and it's a race to see which one's going to win just like the internet phase. But anyway, I digress. The community manager of Star Atlas reached out to me. He said, hey, DG, Star Atlas community manager here. His name is, uh, I can't read this, Dominic Vane. Sorry if I got that wrong. But uh, he says, I want to start off by saying your criticisms on the way we've been handling content on our YouTube is heard and noted. An analogy would be like if Jared reached out to me, right? Uh, which Jared actually has talked to me on occasion. But yeah, like if 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 actually Jared was like, you know, we care what you say. No, they do. They Cloud Imperium actually does care what I say. It's it's pretty cool to have that connection with with Cloud Imperium. But anyway, it's it seems like we're making that connection with Star Atlas as well. I give them credit for having the balls to reach out to me and and actually saying, hey man, it's heard and noted. Uh, the production value should definitely be on par with the quality of game we are creating. Okay. All right. All right. I'm with them so far. They're patting me on the back there and I, I can be down with, uh, you know, uh, good, good points about me. <laughs> I've been watching your videos for a bit now and I always appreciate your opinion when it comes to Star Atlas. That's great because they're getting feedback from, from an actual gamer. You know what I'm saying? So that's great. So more of this has to happen. This is Dominic's job. This communication between gamer and developer, very important, very important. Just wanted to assure you that we do listen and we do always want to continue to improve. Okay, good. If you'd like, I'm open to setting you uh, and our CEO, Michael Wagner, up with a Q&A where you can ask all the hard questions you'd like. Completely up to you. Either way, thank you for your feedback. And I can assure you uh, that it's been uh, passed to the team. So this, uh, officially, this video, <laughs> this video where I'm putting fart sounds all over everything. A hota set up for this shit. <laughs> like, is this guy for real? Is this guy a gamer? Like, like this video has been passed around to the team. Okay. That's good. This noise is all people can hear now. That's also good. That's also good. Speaking of which, now that they're in our Discord... The, the gentleman who actually made the content, Davey B, uh, <laughs> uh, he says the, the following. I'm the guy behind the less than stellar videos. As I said earlier, I agree with most of your feedback and we aim to improve our future content. But please, despite my low budget missteps, <laughs> you know what? That's that's a sad thing. Put more. But give this guy more budget. Shame. Shame bell. Shame bell. Hold on a second. Shame, Bell. Shame. It's a total misstep. 
shame. Total misstep on on the marketing department. Definitely want to put a lot of money into uh, the marketing here. And you can see this man's basically saying, my hands are kind of tied. I don't have the budget to make videos like we're accustomed to seeing as gamers. And this, like, remember how Cyberpunk's production was? Cyberpunk's production was perfect. The game, not so much so. But the production on it was great, <laughs> you know? All I'm trying to get across to them is they got to up the game on the production level, right? Um. So uh, it's he says, as I stated earlier, I agree with most of your feedback, and we aim to improve our future content. But please, despite my low-budget missteps, don't sleep on Star Atlas. Even at this stage, uh, at this early stage, we have a strong and growing community that is sticking around because they see the quality of the work and the team listening to the feedback and making changes. Trust me, I'm one of those dudes that want to see this work. Like, I'm, I'm a big proponent of play and earn, not play to earn, play and earn. OK, I want there to be a developer that makes this and makes it a reality, but does it for the right reasons for the game, for the gamers. OK, um, I'm glad you like the environment of the showroom. It's a, the only thing I did like was the showroom and I had to be rational and I had to, you know, I had to come at this like a journalist and I had to look at like the good, the bad and the ugly. And that's what we did on that video. And he says, this is my favorite. <laughs> I'm glad you like the environment of the showroom. More to come soon. I talked about this last night at the after party, but this is my favorite line here. <laughs> and I'm proud of this. P.S. It's, <laughs> it's hard for me to watch my videos now without hearing your wet fart sounds over the top. Woo! <laughs> I am glad that that video is being passed around and they hear every fart sound in that video, okay? It's it's a wake-up call. It's a wake-up call to the marketing. It's a wake-up call to the CEO. It's it's just, a, a, it's like, guys, get your shit together. Raise the bar up a little bit, for God's sake. They're scrambling right now because the industry doesn't have the same money that it did a, a year ago because crypto's gone down the shitter, right? It'll come back. It'll come back. Everything's cyclical, you know? But the thing is, is they need the exposure right now. They need the attention because it's gone. They didn't, They had it. They had it last year, and now they don't. So I respect that. But really what I want to get across to everybody here is the reason I'm not going to have an interview with Michael Wagner isn't the effort because, trust me, it's a lot of effort to conduct an interview. I take them very seriously. I've done a couple on the channel here. Uh, but and I always direct my question. My my questions are very direct to the point, and uh, you know, it, it when I when I ask them, it's it's gonna matter to everybody because I I cut that bullshit out. I sniff through the the garbage, and I see what's there, right? So really, the reason why I didn't accept the the interview with Michael Wagner, CEO of Star Atlas, is because they got to raise their game up if they if they want the interview. I it's below me, right? The content I saw is below DG360 standards, right? I definitely want to see higher level content from you first. If I, because because now my expectations went down. They crashed through the fucking floor. My expectations went really down after watching this. Now let's see what Davey does with content creation. Let's see if they raise the bar up, right? If they raise the bar up, I'm starting to like the content. They take the, they take the criticisms as they were intended constructively and they do something different and the content's good. Okay, great. Now maybe I'm going to have an interview with Michael. But the questions I would ask Michael are, are, are twofold, really. The, the, <laughs> the questions I would ask really would be when play and earn and not play to earn, okay? Because it all appears like it's play to earn to me. Like it all appears like a money fucking pyramid to me now. It didn't before, but now it really does after the content I saw. So that would be my first question. My second question would be, you know, what was the impetus behind Star Atlas? What was the origin point, right? Because you don't see this in interviews. You, you never really see this in, in an interview where people just cut to it. Let's get to the beginning. How did it start? What was the spark? What made this idea happen? Was it the NFTs or the crypto? Shame on you. Shame, shame, shame. Pepe, hit me up with a shame bell. Shame. Listen, that's never going to work. Shame. If your origin point is NFT or crypto, then get out of my face. I don't even want to talk about you. I don't even have the interview anymore, right? Now, <laughs> if it's about decentralized gaming on a blockchain, now you've got my interest. If it was simply to make a cool game for gamers, now you got my idea. 
Now you got it. Now you got that recipe. That's play and earned. That's the difference. And those are the two questions I would ask simply. And that'll be the end of the interview. That would be the end of the interview. That's all I need to know. Like, I don't need to know any fancy numbers or revenues or anything. I mean, obviously, that's important. That we always check that with Cloud Imperium. But, like, I'm not even in that invested right now into Star Atlas to care because they dropped the ball. Do you see what I'm saying? They dropped the ball. So they got to pick up the ball, they got to dribble it, and they got to make a basket <laughs> because they completely fucked it up. They completely fucked it up. And it really put a bad taste in my mouth. Like, the, the content we saw here was just the way they started this with the iPower merch. By the way, I made a mistake in this video because obviously, obviously I'm live and sometimes I make mistakes. But this iBuyPower thing that they did, I thought was their trading platform. It's not their trading platform. It's just, you know, uh, limited time merch, you know, with Star Atlas uh, PC uh, cases and shit like that. And they were shilling iBuyPower, which is a computer uh, uh, hardware company, a, a site that builds computers for you called iBuyPower. And that's how they, that like, this is the content that was on the channel. Completely, I think, unnecessary. I don't know. Maybe hardcore Star Atlas fans do want the, the PC cases. I understand. We get that kind of flair in Star Citizen all the time. I just thought it was kind of, like, really cheesy the way they put this commercial together. It was horrible. Listen to this. The guy, the, listen, the picture in the background's crooked. You know, like, the woman when she first started was, was in a blank wall. They just got, like, a token pretty girl. Girl. They put her up there. No offense against this girl. I'm not, you know, trying to publicly make her feel horrible. It's just the presentation from the top was horrible. Look, Hound look, is you know, so horrible. It, it's just I'm saying it's horrible. Go I'm literally saying phone. it's there horrible. So much. The effort. audio is terrible. The production value was terrible. Everything that I saw on the channel was actually terrible, uh, except for the showroom. And so, really, the uh, that's that's my advice. <laughs> When you're getting into the, the gaming world, right, and you're in game development, the second – gamers are going to look right through the bullshit. And, and the, the Gamers are probably the best critics ever in the world about everything. A gamer doesn't just critique gaming. A gamer expertly critiques movies. A gamer expertly cr cr critiques food. A gamer can expertly critique anything. Gamers are so accustomed to being fucking wham bam baboozled, the fucking bait and switch. So many gamers so used to the bullshit. Corporate capitalism directly feed it into our eyeballs every fucking day. Gamers can smell through it. And I'm telling you right now, when I saw this content hit, my nose went off. It just went off. And everything else followed. <laughs> everything else followed. Interestingly enough here, my friend Erad gets into it. <laughs> he says, I may have criticized Robert Space Industries' work a few times, but I have never ever, but uh, never have Chris Roberts, Sandy, or, or Jared come after me in a petty Twitter battle, and that is the sign of professionals. Sadly, that can't be said about everyone. Well, okay, what has happened here that Erat has picked on? It looks like Star Atlas CEO Michael Wagner did not like my last Star Atlas video and let me know in a lengthy Twitter battle, and I believe he should have never lowered himself doing so. All the juicy details in this video. Wow. I cannot wait to watch this. Let's check it out. I usually stay as far as possible from Twitter battles simply because it's usually a waste of time and it just doesn't look good. However, two days ago, I did get into a fight, and I'll tell you why. What's up, man? Welcome to the stream, dude. Hey guys, The Eradicator here, and today's video is quite special because it's not what I had originally scheduled for you guys this week, but... I've really got to report on what happened two days ago on Twitter because I believe that you will be quite entertained. So, here... I can't wait. But listen, Sage, just so you know, if you become a member on, on the channel, you'll have access to every single episode. You'll have access to every single episode. I put that sweet little paywall in there. I'm sorry. I have to feed my children. Is <laughs> what happened. About uh, a week ago, I decided to check out whether or not Star Atlas had made any progress in their game development process. 
And I say game because I don't give a damn about NFTs or cryptos. So I was going out there with a purely <laughs> game. I love them. <laughs> Listen. <laughs> the trader in me in real life, right? Uh, I've taken, I can't even tell you, countless days, weeks, months of research into uh, different cryptos and NFTs, right? So, like, obviously, I'm coming at it from much more experience, but I just love that irreverence. I love Erad for that. He's like, I don't give a fuck about it. Like, I just love that about Erad. Gaming mindset. I love it. And I was just astonished with the low quality of the content that they had produced and their inability to create any serious content for gamers. Yes. Not crypto enthusiasts. Yes. So I made a first uh, video where <laughs> I explained my feelings about said content and another one where I was brutally honest about my thoughts on Star Atlas's team's ability to create a game of this caliber. And when I say... When it, one of the reasons why Erad and I are friends are because we are ruthless about our criticisms, but we're true. Like, a lot of the times when we're talking, it's coming from a place inside our hearts as gamers, and it's just coming out. And I think people appreciate that about the Eradicator. I know I do. One of the reasons I'm really good friends with Erad is he just says it like it is. Even if Erad and I disagree, dude, I love his compassion. I love the way Erad puts together his arguments. Even if I don't agree with them, dude, I respect them. And most times, Erad and I do agree. We are we are pretty good friends, man. And I have to say, most times, Erad and I do agree. When we don't, watch out. <laughs> watch out. When I gave some feedback about <laughs> That's what awesome, they should do I love you, bro. speak to actual gamers and improve their standards for content creation quality, because quite frankly, if this is what they are contenting themselves with, then how is it going to be when you know they are going to be making their actual game? At this point, Star Atlas's developers should create credibility and trust, yes. not make videos yes. that people use as a laughing stock. Yes. Updated the background. Okay, so. Wait, did you put me on here? Wait, wait, did you put me on here, dude? Hold on. Like, you're basically showing me laughing at him. <laughs> oh my god, E Man, that's great, dude. You need to turn me up a little bit, though. You you put you, like <laughs> like constructive criticism. <laughs> There's no more white wall, at least. Let's, uh, <laughs> <there's no laughs> <laughs> You're showing me laughing. All right. All right. So we've, we've gotten rid of the white wall. Ashley has now gotten rid of the white wall. So with that being said, loud and clear, Michael Wagner, the CEO of Star Atlas, decided to respond to the last video I made. And the least we could say is that I was really not expecting that. I mean, imagine you are at the head of a multi-million dollar company and a tiny 1400, not 1000, 1400 subscriber channel makes a video that criticizes your work and you spend 90 minutes of your precious time bickering with them on social media. I mean, wow. Uh, I personally find that quite... Ex what did he do? Like, what was the bickering about, dude? Like, what, what, what is he doing? Eccentric. And I have made a few negative videos over the past couple of years and never have the CEOs of 2K Games, Star Dogs, Electronic Arts, or even Chris Roberts of Statism come out and pick a fight on Twitter. And you know why? That's simply because they are way too busy managing their companies to even be able to afford spending the time to deal with something this petty. Truth. It is simply Truth. beneath them. And worst of all, these tweets from Michael Wagner that I am going to read right now end up confirming the doubts that I've had re regarding his ability to helm a video gaming project of the scale and ambition of Star oh, I'm Atlas. So, so excited let's for have the a look juiciness. at what transpired <laughs> I'm two so nights excited. ago, shall what, we? What do we got? So here is what happened. Eventually, after the release of the video, some of the most diehard supporters of Star Atlas decided to reply to the video, which of course, if it's fair game, you know, I'm totally open to criticism, and I think that I have a a shell that's hard enough but one of those white knights eventually tagged Michael Wagner the CEO of Star Atlas who eventually did reply here with this tweet don't waste your time the content is laughable zero research that's his opinion <laughs> oh man 
Wow. You know, I don't think he has watched the video, but um, anyway. <laughs> what? So seeing that I got his attention, I decided to eventually write a bait reply to see if it would catch. So here's the, the message. So you're the guy who's making Star Atlas? Look, as I said before, the idea of play to earn is great, but if you want to attract the average gamer and not just crypto enthusiast, you need to speak to them, man, and content production needs to improve. Seriously, it's bad. And oh boy, did he take the bait. And so he replied, <laughs> we will look to your content as specifically what not to do. Okay, this is horrible, man. This is fucking horrible. Okay, I'm going to go from both sides of this now. Not to defend this guy, right? Because that that's really just like bullshit. But I will say this. Erad probably doesn't know too much about um, crypto, as he stated, or blockchain gaming, which is okay. He's just stating his opinion. I think... They're looking at the Eradicator's second channel, which only has 1,400 subscribers, right? If they knew that Erad had 19,000 subscribers on his main channel, they would definitely not be... I don't think this dude, I don't think Wagner would have taken the time to, to comment or say that. This is a complete misstep on, on Michael Wagner's part, you know? But, you know, I will say this. This shows you, like, a lack of compassion a little bit, Maybe he felt offended and maybe he watched Erad's content and realized that maybe Erad didn't know too much about the space and then he just responded in such a manner. But like Erad saying, man, could you imagine Chris Roberts like actually taking the time out to like slam someone? I mean, it feels like Michael Wagner's uh just going complete musk on this. <laughs> like complete musk on this. And this is just the start? Wow. Do cheers. Well, Michael Wagner Dude, let me tell you something. At least my sound is much better than the sound of the videos that have been made on your <laughs> channel. That's number one. Number two, I know how to use a green screen. And number three, I speak to my audience. So yeah, maybe you should. I also replied on Twitter with the following tweet. Well, I'm not the one who is trying to make a game and convince the masses that it's the next big thing, nor am I the one professionally <laughs> creating content. I'm just a random dude who likes gaming. Shouldn't I be your market target? And I really think here, yeah, when I'm writing up... This made my day, dude. This made my day completely, man. This made my oh, day completely. Closer to Mr. Weiner, I am really honest and genuine. I'm not an enemy of Star Atlas. I actually like the idea of play to earn. That's something that I, I think want e to just see needs to learn a little bit more true. about it. I don't if, mean if... ill to right. Star Atlas or his project. That's right. the reason why I was making these videos on the first place right. was to actually to urge him. And, and what Erad's doing is is giving publicity to the project. There's probably a lot of people that didn't know Star Atlas was coming out. Like bad news is also good news, man. Like it, people become aware of the project through people like us. You know, the, the, it is kind of crazy. It is kind of crazy, man. And his team to do better, not not taunt them or just say how bad they were. And that's what they clearly did not get, unfortunately. To which he replied, we have an incredibly wide audience consisting of gamers, play-to-earners, metaverse explorers, and crypto enthusiasts. The path to attracting each of those cohorts is different and very much factored into our GTM, which did not really imp Wow, that is such a good point. Look at Michael saying we have an incredibly wide audience consisting of gamers. So he's trying to he's trying to again shill and promote the Star Atlas through everything he says. I mean, why wouldn't he? He's the CEO, right? But he says uh, P two ears. See again, this th what the fucking industry does not understand is play to earn is just as bad as the fucking word metaverse, which is just as bad as NFT. Right now in this space, right. There is such a toxic, bad taste in everybody's mouth with NFTs because obviously there, there does need to be more research in the area and people need to actually take the time to want to care, but people don't because it's been displayed in such a manner where the, everybody's saying all of them are fucking bad, uh, which is really a, 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 a very miseducated stance on it, but that's okay. Uh, the thing is, is that this is this is the problem. P Play to earn is is a bad moniker it is a bad taste in people's mouth play to earn metaverse nft right now if you're saying them involved with gaming you just killed yourself you literally just stabbed yourself in the heart people have to actually understand this difference and i've been saying this for one year and i'm starting to see the industry take note 
It's taking a long time for people to adjust to understand the difference between play and earn and play to earn. Play and earn, again, are game developers that worry about the gameplay first and the gamer and the and the crypto and the NFTs are secondary. It's the cherry on top of the Sunday. Play to earn is that grind. You're in it. It feels like a job. You, you, it's corporate. Corpo's sucking the money out of your eyeballs. And so when people are using play to earn, right, P2 ears, you, you fucking lost the gamer. You lost what it is that you're trying to gain. Michael Wagner, shame. You should know, dude. Dude, you should know this. I got to teach them. Shame. I got to teach Shame. these guys. Maybe it's bad that I'm Shame. doing this because maybe these guys' intentions are, are not good from the start. And I'm actually informing them of how to fucking speak to people to make things a success as a professional. Let's read the comment. And it's pissing me off that me, average Joe gamer, can figure this shit out. But a CEO of a company that's brought in millions cannot. It's actually pissing me off because I'm thinking to myself, how am I not in Michael's position and making a game that matters for people that's employing these technologies that does it right? When are we going to get that? Because when I read that, it fucking pisses me off. Uh, because they don't know the nomenclature. They don't know how to speak to the very audience that they are dependent upon. Shame. 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 It's a dangerous tightrope. It's a balancing act. And this industry has 99% people that are just doing it for the wrong reasons. I want that 1%. I want that winner. I want that game that is a play and earn game where I can go in and have fun and maybe make a little bit on the side. I think that's cool. Call me weird. But I think that's cool. I think that's that would be neat if they can compa they make the trading compatible in the game that you could do it all in the game. Uh, Star Atlas is actually doing that, which I think is like if in Star Atlas's defense here, I will say this: what they have done in terms of being able to trade NFTs outside the game on a website and being able to plan or planning on do it, they haven't done it yet. Planning on doing it in the game as well is really a revolution in the gaming industry. I think that's a cool technology. I like that. But when you're wrapping it around, you know, with this fucking shit, you know, the, this play to earn and, the, you know, here we go. We're using the catchwords. Notice P2 ears, metaverse explorers, crypto enthusiasts. They do they not understand that most gamers like they they don't get it. They don't they don't get it. And that's why I'm angry because I really am in favor of this project, but they are literally stabbing themselves in the heart. They're stabbing themselves right now. I see the, the moment, I see the way that they're talking to people and it's completely wrong. Like this is the advice, right? And maybe I'm helping people that are snakes in the grass and maybe I'm helping future people in the gaming industry that want to incorporate crypto, that want to incorporate NFTs. Maybe I'm helping the snakes in the grass. Maybe I'm helping the snake oil salesman. I'm so sorry, but I want that 1%. I want that 1% of game developer that decides I'm doing this for the game, for the gamer, for the fun, and then I will add in the the ability to to trade crypto in game to trade nfts in game i think that that would be cool if they could do that but goddamn goddamn impress me because well when you look at for example his uh, official star atlas youtube channel well it looks like they only have 30,000 subscribers which is what i'm writing here 30,000 subscribers on youtube after two years is not what i consider a wide absolutely. audience of gamers absolutely. and here is the picture to prove absolutely absolutely erad is right absolutely on this prove it here I mean, thank you, thank you. He's incorporating sounds. He's learning from the best. He's learning from the best. He's, you can see Erad is obviously learning from the best. Uh, and he's doing it better than me. God damn it. I hate you, Erad. No, no, I love you. I love you. <laughs> thousand subscribers that's barely the threshold to be noticed by sponsors like the rich wallet or nord vpn so no <laughs> quite a far cry for the incredibly wide audience that he was boasting in his tweet and it just didn't end here mr wagner decided to double down wow. on his twitter fight how is this not news man how is this not this should be on like pc gamer this shit should be like on pc game are you fucking kidding me 
Like, what am I seeing right here? This guy has, like, he's more than doubled down. He's tripling down, man. He's literally tripling down right now. What is going on here, man? Shame. Shame. It's, that is such Shame. a bad look, dude. Perhaps you should follow your own advice and produce higher quality research content. Okay, listen. Michael has a point about Erad not knowing too much about the space. Okay, Michael, I will give a point to Michael on that. But seriously, taking this amount of time to fucking rub somebody's nose in the dirt, man. <sighs> Listen, Erad might not know enough about the space, right? But he, I feel like Erad's just venturing into the space. Now, now imagine. Imagine you're a CEO who's dependent upon gamers to bring in revenue from your company, okay? Imagine you have somebody who's a content creator that creates content about your 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 video. Imagine now that the content creator doesn't know too much about the space, but and maybe he's not saying the nicest things about you, right? Perhaps before going to this route, CEO guy, maybe just... You're 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 actually shunning somebody who's potentially interested in this space. Erad, I can tell, wants to like venture into the space. Erad might take the time to look into it. Erad might take the time to research it, so that he can like have better information. Okay, but literally the way that Michael is speaking now to Erad is literally like he's he's cutting his nose off to spite his face. He is literally doing a disservice to himself. He is turning somebody off to the very things that he wants people to adopt. It is probably the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my life. Like the shame bell again, please. Like it, it is the probably shame. the weirdest thing shame. I've ever seen that, that somebody in this industry who is dependent upon bringing people in to a space that, by the way, has tons of toxic words to it because of all the content. Listen, there is a ton of misinformation in the space. He's right. There are a lot of people that don't know what they're talking about. Erad included. No offense. Erad just hasn't taken the time to 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 do it. But how are you going to bring in new people if you're taking this kind of stance? And if you're truly like an ambassador to this space, would you take out this Look, perhaps you should follow your own advice and produce higher quality research content. Your approach is a disservice to all those followers you've been presenting to for years. Misinformation comes with a cost. Man, these are some like he's he's how is this not how is this not news on like the 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 Kotaku and PC Gamer and you know like how how is this not out there yet like really really <laughs> James says DG you were very distracting during my meetings today good good I'm glad I was it means I'm doing my job <laughs> which isn't a job and I love it yes I do I need more of this <laughs> buzzwords right limitless buzzwords uh, Erat says i am not informed it's true and i don't want to be informed about crypto and nfts i want to be informed about gaming boom 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 that is the trick it is making sure that you are focused on the gamer and the game and that everything else is secondary again illustrating that play and earn needs to be the new vernacular that is what needs to happen but behind that we have to make sure that the developer is in it for good reasons and when i see this it's just like wow it's just like wow it's like wow with me here uh, with this message perhaps you should follow your own advice and produce higher quality research content your approach is a disservice to all of those followers you've been presenting to for years misinformation comes with a cost i really like by the way how he totally ignored my remark about having just 30,000 uh, followers on on youtube but anyway uh, this is what i find fascinating is that uh, this guy is at the head of a multi-million dollar company and he is comparing what he is doing with what i am doing and wow he is so right erad is so right man this just looks so bad on star atlas amateur tiny little channel with just 1400 subscribers this is absolutely ridiculous 
ridiculous, but anyway, I decided to reply here and say, dude, unlike you, I am not a professional, nor am I creating a product that I am selling. I am just a small creator whom, for some reason, you are spending time talking to instead of creating the game. So, yeah, my feedback is brutally honest, but I find it unfortunate that you are not taking feedback. And I also see, and, and Erad's. Erad's opinions, he Erad is very confident about what he's saying. It's coming from feeling, right? Erad obviously needs to research his space a little bit more, but listen. This is this is terrible, man. This is this is terrible, man. It's that is crazy to me. You know, the like again, I am just taken aback that this Michael doesn't understand, you know, the to, it feels like there's a complete disconnect with the gamer and a complete connection with the financial space it feels like that he's trying to connect more with the financial guys the trader guys which i am as well and uh, trust me it connects on that level uh you know it connected to me on that level first as a trader you know it really did that's that's the god's honest truth when i first started star atlas it really wasn't the game i was like wow the trader in me right so it only makes sense that it's good having this um it's good having this. Like I, I, I like me in this space, right? <laughs> Cause I'm coming at this from both sides. I'm coming at it as a trader in real life since 2006, 2007. I've been trading for a long time and I'm coming at this from a gamer and I've been a gamer since I was a kid. So it's interesting to me cause I can see both, both of these, these, the, this play out, but it looks terribly bad on Michael Wagner's part, terribly bad on Michael's part find it unfortunate that he's not following any public relation 101 standards because that is really not what he should be doing let me tell you what he should be doing instead i think that none of this drama would have existed and that everybody would have moved on if he had released a <laughs> erad looks so mischievous like erad <laughs> like what this, i love this picture right now <laughs> what is going on here erad this is this is magic this is magic what, what is this picture of you, Ebred? You look so mischievous in this picture, dude. <laughs> A statement like this, dear Mr. Eradicator, while we fundamentally disagree with the tone of your videos covering our project Star Atlas, we appreciate your honest feedback and we will be- Oh, now they're doing damage control. See, oh god, they have to be- <laughs> Uh, uh, uh. Uh. In his defense, he probably saw the error of his ways and he went and wrote this afterwards, you know? Oh, no, 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 DG. What, what, what? Listen again. Okay, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold this on. This drama would have existed not following any public relation 101 standards because that is really not what he should be doing. Let me tell you what he should be doing instead. I think that none of this. Okay, this is what Erad is saying that he should do. Yes, absolutely, absolutely agree with you, Erad. Got it, got it, got it. Drama would have existed and that everybody would have moved on if he had released a statement like this. Dear Mr. Eradicator, while we fundamentally disagree with the tone of your videos covering our project Star Atlas, we appreciate your honest feedback and we will be doing our best to improve our community content creation. Thank you for following the project. Michael Wagner, CEO, Star Atlas. Professional. But of course, this is not what he did. And that's very unfortunate because let me tell you what happens when you release a boring corporate cinema like that. People just say, meh, okay. And that's basically <laughs> it. Jade. Maybe they thank anarchy, the right, company dude. for acknowledging right, the feedback and they, they move on. But no, Mr. Wagner sent another message here saying, it's clear you are unprofessional and I appreciate you recognizing that we are, which essentially discredits your entire channel. We listen to and incorporate feedback daily. If there is a scam here, it's you defrauding all of your list. Oh. Ugh. This is like a one-two punch to the gut. Listen to me. Erad's loving this shit right now. He knows I was like, he knows I was interested in Star Atlas, right? Erad, listen, congratulations, man. You literally knocked me down. Like I, I, my, I am on the floor right now, dude. Like literally gave me a one, two punch last week. The first punch watching the new content, right? Now this, like, this was the haymaker. This was the haymaker that put me down on the fucking mat with this man. Like, this is insane that this is still going on. This conversation. It's clear. You are unprofessional <laughs> and I appreciate your rec dude, dude. Nude. Dude. 
listen, I understand he's angry. Like he's, he's probably like, listen, I really have to be rational about all this, but it's really unprofessional. But I will say like, I can understand why the dude's angry, you know, like he's probably being put on the fucking, you know, right up against the corner in the ring, taking shots like daily. He's probably on the defensive 98% of the day, you know, like it's gotta be tiring as a human being to deal with it, but it simply needs to be stated this is it. Why? What was the impetus behind the game? Let's get the story out. Let us talk about what the impetus of the game was. Where's that content? Where's that content on Star Atlas's channel? Is it there? Does it exist? Maybe, I don't know. Maybe I'm misinformed and I don't know if it exists. I would love a really nicely edited video from Star Atlas looking at the team. Okay, we need to know about the team. I would love these. These are the things they can do. Let me give you guys the fucking recipe right now. Okay. Since they can't do it, which is just so crazy in the same manner where he saying he's a small time content creator. Uh, he's, he's a small fish in the ocean. The same way that he telling Michael, Hey dude, I'm just like a small guy. And like, look at all this effort that you're expending the same way I am. The same that I'm thinking to myself, like, why am I having to tell these guys how to do it? Like, why am I having to tell these guys how to do it? That's the big problem, right? When I have to really think about it, that puts a bad taste in my mouth. Why am I telling them how to have like a successful recipe? How do I know this and they don't? That shows a clear sign of, of misunderstanding or not having the right people do what it is that needs to be done which is to have a, a, a there needs to be communication between the gamer and the developer and it has to be positive and here's how you fix this fucking train wreck put up some very nicely edited videos on the star atlas site about the team people want to know in a short succinct five to seven minute video about the team okay make another here's the content Here's the winning recipe. You want it? I'm giving it to you, Star Atlas. Davey, listen, this is a long video. We, we started out, Dominic Vane reached out to me, community manager at Star Atlas in our Discord. Please be polite to them. Please be polite. <laughs> uh, Davey B, I appreciate the balls. I appreciate the ability to communicate to me. I really do. Um, But... Like, I don't even want to interview Michael Wagner even more after this, right? Like, it just, it really puts a bad taste in my mouth. All of this puts a bad taste in my mouth. Uh, and frankly, here's the way you fix this dumpster fire. Put out a five to seven minute video first. Put out a five to seven minute video on the team. Show us the 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 studio. Maybe this maybe this shit's already out there, but do it in a professional manner. If it's not, if it's out there, I'm almost guaranteeing from what I saw, it's not professional. <laughs> so put out a, a professional five to seven minute video about your team. Like show the members, show them that they're actually passionate about the project that they want to do this. Right. Uh, you know, focus on that. Then do another video in that video. Talk about the origin point of star Atlas. Talk about have the, have Michael come on and talk about the space, Right. Talk about what was the impetus? What was the idea? Another five to seven minute video with the CEO talking about that professionally edited. There you go. Just those two videos right there, right? Just those two videos. That would be great. Do it in a way that, you know, generally, you know, just kind of gives people the, the idea of what's going on. Also, stay away from metaverse. Stay away from play to earn. Stay away from those buzzwords. Everybody knows those buzzwords, those gamers. You know, once you start using that in the nomenclature and you and you focus on the money financial side of things, I think you've lost the gamer. Really. I know, Erad. I, I'm just, you know how I am. Being a reaction channel, because I have no low effort and no commentary. <laughs> By the way, probably one of the longest highlights we've ever done. Listeners with misinformation do better. <laughs> He's laughing. So, uh, there's a lot to talk about here. Uh, and I'm really wondering here. Uh, that's what E-Red says, I really wonder how an opinion is misinformation.
<laughs> that is so good, dude. That my reply here, I really wonder how an opinion is misinformation because that's what <laughs> I did in the videos that I made. I just gave an opinion on the content that they were making on their channel. Saying that you should do better quality is misinformation? I don't think so. Again, it's just an opinion. Say that I don't understand anything you are saying when you talk about DAO is misinformation because, yeah, man, he made this entire video about this thing called DAO and I swear I did not understand anything he was saying. Uh, also, uh, what about that dude? <laughs> All right, it's a component to their cryptocurrencies. Uh, the Atlas token, the Star Atlas DAO. Here that we saw before who sells PC cases who never built a PC. Uh, is that uh, disinformation as well? No, that's actually not even me saying it. That is himself <laughs> that, that's saying right. that in that particular that's right. video. So I'm really wondering about what kind of misinformation he's talking about. But he did reply with one final tweet. Not grand strategy. Wrong. No game dev experience. Wrong. Copy Star Citizen model. Wrong. I'm pretty sure he must be referring to that thumbnail that I made, which is about the video. Yeah, I would I would just disagree with like the copying Star Citizen. Uh, the only reason I'm saying that is because I see tons of tons of like uh, sci-fi games that have like what I would consider, you know, you can see that through all different types types of sci-fi game. There's always that, you know what I'm saying? Like, look at the Scorpius with the X-wing. You know what I'm saying? Like, you could say, you could say, oh, they took it from the X-wing, and they probably did, and God bless them for doing it because we all need an X-wing in our game. But like th that that shit happens all the time. Like designs of ships always kind of cross and evolve and go from game to game. That's something where it's like you know you can't help that. So I will disagree on the copying uh, 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 ships area. They do have some ships that don't look like Star Citizen ships. But yeah, there are a couple that do look like Star Citizen ships for sure. Caused his uh, his ton Trump. And here's and here's here's examples. Like I do like the Erad does have examples. You know like but like you know you can understand though that like look, look at the way like like you look at the way Erad like, worded this copied Star Citizen designs and could get sued for it. Now I mean come on dude like come on Erad come on dude. And, uh, it's actually everything I'm saying here is true. <laughs> they list on their website that Star Again. Atlas is a grand strategy. Again, opinion, right? Like Michael Wagner shouldn't get upset about this shit. This is opinion based, right? This is Erad's opinion. It's from his heart. It's what he believes is true. And, you know, it's just really stupid misstep on Michael Wagner's part. Strategy game, and in a video I debunked that, showing what real grand strategy games are, and that nothing that they've been showing us in terms of <laughs> gameplay or mechanisms <laughs> is like a grand strategy. Just so keep it real, bro. Just keep debunked. it real. Then, uh, founders have no background in the gaming industry. Michael, Ga Michael Wagner, you don't have any background in the gaming industry. Out of all of the founders, there's only... And again, exactly what I'm saying. You know, there's no information on the team that I know of. Maybe, again, maybe I'm misinformed, maybe I'm incorrect, but there's no information that I can find on this team, at least in a digestible, consumable way in terms of media content. I would love that from Star Atlas. Again, I really think a video is needed talking about the team, talking about who's involved, showing the studio. Again, this is, this is like a no-brainer. Is this a no-brainer to only me? Why am I the only person... Like, I know my audience is super intelligent. I know a lot of them think the way that I think. That's that's because this community is fucking fantastic. And, you know, I'm building clones of myself every day. Uh, congratulations, you're all DG clones. <laughs> no, no, sorry, sorry. No, you're individuals. You all matter. You're me. You're all me. No, so anyway, what I would like to say in conclusion, I will keep watching. Hold on. I will keep watching, and then I'm going to just kind of sum it up one who does so that information on the thumbnail is already correct and copied star citizen designs and could be sued for it because in theory well if, if it is too close it is a probability i don't know how high that probability is but it is and i mean when you look at the design here of the blade and this uh, visus uh, amway well the designs are extremely similar it's the same shape even the wingless in the back are the same so yes what i'm saying here is true and that's very unfortunate that michael weiner is uh, refusing to acknowledge that so there you have it, the CEO of a multi-million dollar wow. company arguing good, good and comparing video. himself with my insignificant video, channel. And quite frankly, this is by far the most ridiculous thing I have ever seen since I've started making content on all those years ago. And seriously, Michael Wagner, bro, if you're watching this video, I sincerely hope for the sake of your project that you raise your standards because... I, I heard him say with, with, with Erad's accent, I heard him say Michael Weiner. <laughs> 
said, now we heard Michael Wiener. <laughs> Unlike you, since you feel like making comparisons, right? This channel is my hobby. I do it for myself and the like-minded people who have been following me for quite some time. Well, you are No, I think Michael Wagner is the CEO. I'm pretty sure Michael Wagner is the CEO, not the CFO, uh, chief executive officer, not the uh, chief financial officer. I don't, I don't think Michael Wagner is the CFO, and I think that might be one of the problems. Everybody views him as a CFO because he really talks about the money a lot. You know, he really talks about the crypto side of things. And so, like, a lot of people do have that impression, though, that he is CFO. I, it's not the first time I've actually heard that. I've actually heard that, like, people people uh, think he's the CFO uh, because he talks about the money all the time. You know what I mean? to be a professional on the quest to build credibility and trust in a crypto gaming project that desperately needs it in these times of defiance. And behaving like a high school student on social media is certainly not how you are going to achieve that. So dude, please, take the high ground and be the better man and take people's advice when they urge you to do better. Ooh, mic drop. I heard a mic drop. Listen, first off, I want to say this. I'm going to like this video. Uh, let's go help out Erad. Uh, this is a second channel. I'm going to link it for those people that are currently live. Uh, I will also put this in the description on the YouTube highlight. If you're watching on YouTube, it will be in the description below. This is my buddy, my, my friend, my, my compadre here. And sure, he doesn't know a lot about the space, but he's, he's talking from the heart. He's a gamer, right? What I saw from Michael Wagner, not good. Um, just seems like there's a, a lack of understanding on how to connect with gamers is really all that I see uh, from Michael Wagner. Um, but really, there should be a lot more professionalism there. Totally agree with Erad's point of view um, uh, in terms of that. Uh, but I can just sum up everything I saw here. And in, in, uh, let me just sum it up in one sound. Wow. 